Okay, you can switch with Jennifer. Jennifer, you can switch with Hero. No. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a guy's choice. <laughs> I feel yeah. like I don't. I don't yeah. <laughs> last place to be last caught me off guard. Yeah. Giving all the praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles, elders, and bishops, the great millstone who rule well over the flock. Shalom, and salutation to you, brothers out here that's pushing the words of truth and sincerity. Shalom to the Aqua and the Akim out here that's a part of the elect, scattered Israelites. Shalom, I brought this out. This video will be edifying. It's dealing with this uh, video that I watched. Um, World Star had it up first, and then I check that out it was on um you know youtube as well as you can see the title here is called whose girlfriend is the most attractive and it's about jubilee and what they do in this is rate the girls um five different girls uh, most attractive between the girls who they think is most attractive and then they go on to rate um the guys the boyfriends of the girls who rate uh out of the five who are the most attractive least the greatest one is least five is the most attractive. It's, it got the vibe of like what Kevin Samuels used to do. How he used to have them girls call in and then ask them what they believe they, uh, you know, their looks was just based off of looks. And of course, you know, the most, you know, it ended up being that out of the girls, the um, um, Israelite woman, all right. Which there's a few probably in there. I think the one who the guys that chose the top girl. She, I think she's an Israelite as well, but, um, you know, the, the so-called nigger woman or the black woman, Eve, she got to be voted the most attractive out of the five girls, and they completely left uh, number five. They ain't nobody say anything about her. You know, her name was Jennifer. You know, she had a nice attitude, but she obviously not as pretty and attractive as uh, the rest of the girls. But come here come the guys when they do their voting. Um, the guys had the ugliest girl second best. I mean, second worst. And then they put the black girl at the back. So all of the girls remained in the same order except the black girl stayed at the bottom. And so this tells a lot, man. Um, for Eve, Eve is, she. you could tell the woman she kind of struggles to understand why. She says she don't deserve to be at the bottom, so forth and so on. And, you know you know the the idea is basically you know we you know as referencing um a quote by apostle the Hall, i believe he said um that our, our situation would be 10 times easier if eve was in her right mind you know eve out here looking for love in all the wrong places and so you're not going to get it why because it's not our time it's not our habitation furthermore there's a long history that comes in and is embedded in you know the minds of all of these people you know back in back dealing with who we are who we who we are now to them and who we used to be so you know the lord said he gonna do these things to us we're not gonna be able to shake them off we're not gonna be able to pretty us you know dust them off and these curses gonna cleave unto us cleave so if you don't know like this eve here she's struggling with the idea that she's the most ugliest in in the eyes of these guys well, that's about right, you know, and Eve, you kind of put yourself on a pedestal. Really, the reason why a lot of these girls won't say nothing is because they scared daddy. You know, they, if they say anything wrong about Eve, not only that girl might physically harm her, beat her up, but they might be seen outside in these streets and then another girl recognize her and then, and then beat her up for a comment. So, you know, Eve got pressure, put pressure on all the rest of the uh, nation's women. You know, they are scared of Eve, but the men ain't scared of Eve. You know, men have never been. You know, men had their way with you, Eve, and then they toss you to the side. They're not really even that attracted you, according to them. Um, so this is Micah 7 and 10 real quick. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it and shame shall cover her, which said to, unto me, where is thy power? Where is the power? 
Where is the Lord thy power? Mine eyes shall behold her, and now she shall be trodden down as a miles of the streets. And guess what? This is, this this goes for the um, ones of our nation that are evil, that are wicked, which is the majority of women of our nation. You've turned to the ways of uh, uh, this world. The Lord said, I have enmity with the world. If you friends, if friendship with the world is enmity with me. Um, and so you try to make a friend out of the world and the world really don't love you back. You're looking for love in all the wrong places and what's going to happen to you, shame shall cover you. And it's going to get even worse. That's just a, 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 a representation of what's going to happen. So the Lord's going to have you at the bottom and keep you there for a while. And you become the enemy of the ones who believe because in your eyes, the Lord should have been back already. You've given up hope, a lot of you. A lot of you. You know, you, you, you've fallen to the same um, um, tropes that um, cause men around the world to abuse you and see you as nothing but sexual objects, right? Which, you know, this is the once once upon a time, beautiful Eve, you know. Now, I found a top, I found an article that kind of go into a little bit of it. And then, of course, the scripture time. So let me read it a little bit. It says Jezebel is one of the three common racial slurs against all black women and girls. It's a decent article. And it goes into three different types of um, racial slurs against black women and girls. I'm just going to read a little bit of it. It says, number one is Mammy is a slave construct of a black woman that distorts the notion of caregiver. Lassen Billings wrote, Mammy is a generalized character, generally characterized as a grossly overweight, jolly, unattractive, dark complexion woman. An asexual living only to serve the master mistress and hurt their children. She is even neglectful of her own children and family while simultaneously overly solicitous toward whites. That's the mammy. All right. Skipping down. The, the Another one is two. Two is Sapphire. It says it is a construct that labels black women as stubborn, bitchy, bossy and hateful. She lacks the re requisite femininity to make her attractive to any man. It says that Latin Billings writes the Sapphire construct suggests that black women are the reason for the enmity between black men and women. Goes back to the 1950s television character for on Amos and Andy. According to West, during slavery, the standard for femininity for white women, passivity, frailty, and, and domest domesticity did not apply to black women. They, black women, were characterized as long, as strong, masculinized workhorses who labored with men in the fields, or as aggressive women who drove their children and partners away with their overbearing natures. The reality is that the slaveholders sold black women children and husbands away which cause unimaginable grief and understandable anger so the idea is that you become the product of what slavery made you and really never changed since then and certain movements only strike that uh old character that old strong black woman that old workhorse masculinized uh, uh woman who who pushes her children and her her husband away you know that that or that bitchiness you know, that, that hateful, that stubbornness, you know, the lack of uh, uh, femininity that comes for you. That's that's all coined, you know, that was uh, contrived by um, during slavery. All right. That's what the situation is. Certain certain of uh, 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 Negro women pretty much had to had to face. That was a reality. You had to live with so many years. But it's so easy. It's, it's almost like the curse comes right back again because. You know, instead of seeing it now that you have your man and seeing you have uh, the Lord kind of open it up where we're not in that hardcore slavery no more. You still behaving as if, you know, mass is still going to come with the whip. If if you if you got a man in the house and we all know there's certain laws that allowed this punish uh, women, black women specifically for having men in the house. That's what welfare was all about. Creating strong, independent woman, that same woman that she needed to be in order to uh, protect her young from slave masters. You know, that she had to be out in the field with us. This, you know, the unprotected black, quote unquote, black woman, that's still, uh, uh, it's still being promoted basically in law form. You know, you had the enmity between a man and a woman created with um, uh, child support. 
how the man could end up being locked up. He'll never forgive you for that. How they, you know, they give the woman more rights to the to the children over the men. You know, just in general, how they try to create an equal environment, playing field for the man and the woman, it is is it create it helps it helps reinforce these characters that was created through the slave slave uh, slavery, right? And so that's number two. You know, that angry black woman trope is what they call it. Nasty, angry, mad black woman, so forth. Number three, the stereotypical um, of black woman or nigger woman or, or Judite women in particular is that Jezebel it says a slave construct and a stereotype that paints black women as evil and immoral. Jezebel's stereotype is synonymous with promiscuity, having an insatiable sexual appetite and someone who uses sex to manipulate men. And this is all wickedness, man. It's all pushed the vibration that all, all women is going to be way more uh, sexual than, than sex toys. You know what I'm saying? It's all pushed, you know, and at a young age, it's pushed upon men to look at y'all like that. You know, we got music, the music videos push that. And we understand that the sexual nature, the female, the female um, body and whatnot is beautiful. All right. Beauty is written. Female beauty is spoken about all throughout the scriptures. All right. You got Psalm, uh, Song of Solomon, 1 and 5. I am black but comely. O ye daughters of Jerusalem. Right? And we know that word comely means beautiful. And so we know comely, pleasant to look at, attractive. It says as the tense of Kadar. And the Kadar is a, is a word that also means um, black. Kadarwa. All right? Dark skin. As the curtains of Solomon. Look not upon me because I am black because the sun have looked upon me. My mother's children was angry with me. They made me a keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard have I not kept. All right. And so dealing with the, the woman's beauty, we know that it's there. But when you, you know, what would, what they would do is going back to this article, purposely um, make the black woman and child woman um, seem lustful. And that was all mainly through advertisement, seem treacherous, whatnot. It says reproduction and having a constant supply of slaves was essential to the institution of slavery. That is well. It says Pilgrim states that enslaved young black girls were encouraged to have sex as a part of their socializations and future as future breeders. When young black girls became pregnant during slavery, this was just seen just seen as evidence of their insatiable sexual appetites and their Jezebel Jezebel nature. You know, you you got breeding farms with with people humans on it. Of course, the women is going to be, um, be pushed to breed at younger and younger ages, so that they can have more bear more children. That's exactly what you do with with with, with dogs when you breed them. It says um, Deborah Gray White providing details accounts of slave women and the culture of slavery says that the Jezebel stereotype were meant to characterize black women. She writes in every way Jezebel was a counter image of the mid 19th century ideal of a victorian lady she did not lead men or children to god piety was foreign to her according to west during slavery black women were stripped naked examined and to determine their reproductive capacity placed on auction blocks and sold she states that enslaved black women were coerced bribed induced seduced ordered and uh, of course violently forced to have sexual relations with slaveholders their sons male relatives or the overseers Jezebel stereotype which branded black women as sexually promis pr sexually promiscuous and immoral was used to rationalize these sexual atrocities and what happens is to this day you feed into it you know they created a culture in which you, you know any is not created anything that is anti truth and anti uh Hebrew Israelite culture our true culture our true identity you're going to be coerced to do things that truly don't fit you and so you you wearing hair that don't fit you you look at you, you you got the makeup on to cover to cover what you really truly look like everything's a misrepresentation of truth and you fall into that trap coerced into the uh very very situation uh that that caused you to be like that coerced back into like little slave jezebels the jezebel image was excused uh miss Gen image excuse miscegenation whatever that is miscegenation 
and the sexual exploitation of black women. Southern, um, going down, reading down, Southerners needing to justify slavery and race relations used the mammy image to make a good, slavery a good, posit, positive, good. Um, they even got a picture in here it's, uh, in which they got a little black girl with just a little covering to cover it up with a little fan and she's being like um it's you know kind of like she's being like um seductive it says the perception of black women as jezebels and the jezebel stereotype also affected black young women during slavery and post-slavery according to the pilgrim according to pilgrim from the end of the ninth of the civil war to the mid 1960s no southern white male was convicted of raping or attempting to rape a black woman they not only included enslaved black women and black girls, but these stereotypes migrated to include and sexually objectify black girls and black children post-slavery. According to Pilgrim, an analysis of Jezebel images also reveals that black female children are sexually objectified. And that's the answer, man. They What they do is they do it from a young age. So they're going to objectify you, Eve. They're going to do it. They're going to do it worse than you. And they're going to make you think if you submit to a man, that's objectifying yourself. You already lost. But what you're going to end up doing is objectifying yourself anyway. The propaganda machine that's been in place since the since slavery. All right. Is is made to make you look sexualized, sexualize you from a young girl age. And they did this through um, through uh, media. It says an analysis of. Jezebel images also reveals that the black female children are sexually objectified. Black girls with the faces of pre-teenagers are drawn with adult-sized buttocks, which are exposed. They are naked, scantily clad, or hiding seductively behind towels, blankets, trees, and other objects. A 1949 postcard shows a naked black girl hiding her genitals with a paper fan. Although she has the appearance of a small child, she has noticeable breasts. With the accompanying caption reads, Honey, I was waiting for you down south. The sexual innuendo is obvious. And they go on to do a study um, how black girls are perceived compared to their white counterparts. It says black girls need less nurturing, need less protection, need to be supported less, need to be comforted less, uh, more independent, more about no more about adult subjects and no more about sex and what happens is it it it's becomes the norm what you do you basically put these images out there long enough to become the norm so what do you have now the over sexualization of black girls by their own selves they're fitting them same racial and sexual stereotypes that men have put on them from all these years you know and 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 not turning back especially hating the man at the same time but the scriptures tell you once again what would befall our, 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 you know women you know a proverbs 11 and 22 says as a jewel of gold in a swine's mouth a swine's snout so is a fair woman which is without discretion so you you gotta cover up yourself you gotta take care of yourself you gotta know you know, not to be promiscuous. You need to know why. You need to know that you a daughter of Israel, or or you just subject into the to the same stereotypical racial and sexual um thing that's laid out for you. Images that's laid out for you on TV. Images that's laid out for you on a, on on the news, on the radio. All right, on on Instagram, you see the sexualization of the young girl, right? And you know these people in the in the alphabet community is pushing for that P. They pushing strong for that P to be to be with younger and younger people every day. So you're gonna see it. In the NLT, it reads, "A beautiful woman who lacks discretion is like a gold ring in a pig's snout." And so you gotta understand, you can be as beautiful as you want. You ain't got that discretion. You're done. You're like a you're like a something beautiful that's in in the middle of a pig. And we all know swan is is um. You know, unholy. You know, to eat is defile to defile yourself. It's the sin. All right, and so you know, all throughout the scriptures, you have situations where you know about women and women being fair, but they're being in order. Genesis twelve and eleven says, and it came to pass when, when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that 
He said unto Sarai, his wife, Behold, now I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, they shall say that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. <clears throat> Verse 14 And it came to pass that when Abram was come into the e Egypt, the Egyptians beheld that the woman that she was beheld the woman that she was very fair, I mean beautiful. The princes uh, also of Egypt saw her and commended her before Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And these are the things, so what happens when, you know, a woman is beautiful. So how they rating this woman here, you could, you could tell it's based upon the stereotypes. It's based upon they don't need as much love. You know, they're strong and independent. These are symbols to most men of, you know, that you don't want, that's not attractive to men. A strong-willed man, a uh, woman, ain't attracted to a man that's looking for um you know some submission number one submission somebody who when you come home you're gonna you know you're gonna be able to say can you do can you cook for me can you do this for me can you what right do this for the children and she ain't gonna buck up against you giving you all type of reasons why that's pretty much the lot that eve has fell into why most men really won't want to do it, do anything to do with her. You can't just look at the outer beauty of a woman and not see that she's contentious. You can't just look at the outer beauty of a woman and not see that she ain't right for you or your household, all right? She's, she's, she's filled with hatred or she's adulterous. She'll deal with any man the same way she deals with you. And that is the stigma that has, is attached to a lot of these nigga women. And they have allowed themselves to live out that stigma i mean they have they own it now and you can't tell sometimes you can't tell media from what's not all right we know a lot of these women is getting paid to do it you know esau is still behind this machine pushing that idea and that idea false identity to our women but they allow that they embrace that now that whole culture that slut culture they embrace it more than any of these other ones that bitch and we bossy and this that and the third you embracing it just like Jake out here, these niggas is embracing gun culture, gangbanging culture. They embracing these things, you know. So when you go to um an article here, what makes a woman attractive? It says according to men, um according to science, men find women more attractive when they are smart, intelligent, caring, confident, hum humorous, kind, independent, and supportive. A lot of these things, you know, you know, you don't you don't get with that Jezebel type, man. You don't get with eve a lot of these things that supportiveness and that kindness that that might last for three minutes that might last for the first three months right the beginning is always the best everybody say that's why you date around and some dudes never stop dating they meet you for a while get what they want and then they bounce why because that's when the bs starts to come on come in sometimes you could pick them out oh i give her three months before she start acting up i get this one six months this moment might last a year you know because you know and if a dude strike gold, he going to end up with a chick, you know, she might be a part of the elect. If she just naturally kind, caring, you know, and supportive the whole th way through. And we know that even that's going to come with his penalties and this, you know, brothers always speak about that. Mary brothers. So more than more than more importantly, brothers, it's it's up to us to understand the situation and the in the plot and the schemes that Esau is continually pushing on our women and the and the visor for them to be evil and wicked towards us, the, for them to be Jezebel, for them to hate what's going on. And yes, the system adds to the curses. The fact that we are under Esau Edom adds to the curses. It adds to what the Lord has already said, what will happen to our women. He would, you know, put an enmity between uh our uh, us and our women. It would it would have, you know, that's that he would have a uh, uh, rage and 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 um, there would be a disorder between the man and 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 our women. That's a part of these curses upon us. When you go to article about seventeen men's things, men find very attractive. A man prefers a woman who can stay calm and relaxed. Beauty is more than makeup and a fancy haircut. Men find women more attractive when they are neat and clean. Men find women who find women who smell nice. Find women who smell nice, who have clean hair and hydrated skin, more attractive than a face perfectly covered up in makeup. So that's another thing with Eve, covered up in makeup. See, all the things that were not you've you've been taught to do the things that cause you to be naturally mistrusted, unliked, and unattractive. And then you go around proud as hell. 
as if we should look all past the things that, you know, naturally we, we want to see. Look past that. Look past the bad attitudes. Look, Just be happy that you were a black woman. That's that's never going to be, you know. The Lord ain't make men to, to, to do that. He made men to lead, not to follow. Um, this topic said, what makes a woman magnetic and irre ir irresistible? It says a truly irresistible woman is honest about what she wants and the way she lives her life. You can't get a lot of honesty through an adulterous woman. That's for sure. She going to cheat on you, deal with your friends. So you, you see the two things, brothers, at the end of the day, it comes down to how much of this woman has been, you know, compromised by this society. And how much is her want, want understands the idea of um, being born again and turning back and having a man rule over her? That's very rare, brothers. That's very rare. That's very rare. A virtuous woman is like rubies who can find her. You know, it's very rare. And you can't walk out here thinking every big button and smile is going to do that. It's not. It's not. It's not likely. Right. It's when you go to Wikipedia, femininity, it says traits uh, such as nurturance, sensitivity, sweetness, supportiveness, gentleness, warmth, passion, cooperativeness, expressiveness, modesty, humility, empathy, a a affection, tenderness and being emotional, kind, helpful, devoted and understanding have been cited as stereotypical femininity. You don't really get that. at it. You don't get that at all through the typical or the stereotypical Eve. American Eve, man. This is the the and Jake really wants and desires since children. We always desire to have an Eve, bro, at home. Bros don't want to, you know, this this bachelor life that was supposed to end. And we supposed to have an Eve who had these nurturing, supportive, passionate, warmth qualities. But because this system and according in in uh, in, in accordance with <laughs> Our enemies ruling over us, they've created our women to be like monsters, bro. So you're not supposed to be, you know, you, you the, the fact that so many men are going their own way and single, it's unnatural, but it's a, it's a true reaction to what is left out here. The mindset of the average Eve, bro. Contentious, argumentative, hateful, spiteful, abusive verbally, physically. Not listening. Simple. Article on toxic femininity says toxic femininity, femininity refers to the adherence to the gender binary in order to receive conditional value in, in a patriarchal society. This is what they being fed with. It's a patriarchal society. Gender roles. Adherence to gender roles. It says it is a concept that restricts women from to being Cooperative, passive, sexually submissive, gentle, and deriving their value from physical beauty while ple being pleasing to men. Can you see that? Can you see how it is the, the whole system is against women being like that? That type of typical type of woman? That natural? What is natural? Because you could say that's typical, but what is natural? That's natural. For a woman to be passive and sexually submissive to her husband gentle to her husband cooperative in nature to her husband man it's her husband all right as opposed to that powerful femininity means women adopting to exaggerated traditional masculine characteristics such as strength and competitiveness to succeed and this is what america has created the competitive strong independent non-helpful non-submissive non-cooperative unaffectionate Eve and they say go ahead get your pick no nah, man that's not how it's going that's not how it's going to end the scripture says she that is thine enemy uh, shall see it and shame shall cover her which said unto me where is our power my eyes shall behold her now she shall be trodden down as am I in the streets you cannot leave that that will be her penalty for being unruly unpious unnatural she shall be trodden down as a mighty streets, meaning stepped on. Okay? Stepped on, you know, as mud. And so, you know, the Lord's going to deal with Eve uh, uh, very precisely, man. And the reason why all of this happened, once again, if you don't understand Eve, even dealing with the first video, is because it's not set up for you to be 
where you at the top. We not at the top. And one of the things that nations have the privilege of doing is behaving in a manner as if we not the Lord's people. They're behaving in a manner as if your skin makes you nasty. They behaving in a manner as if you you're supposed to be at the bottom. We all know this. I'm not attracted to you. I'm not attracted. The the beauty and what is attractive is the Edomite skin tone, Edomite nose, Edomite lips, when we all know that's the opposite. But they have the privilege right now to pretend like they are they were made to, to perfection the beauty and we aren't our skin is dark and dirty this is the the appeal all right that when you try to uh, um coerce with them and connect with them on some type of level of physical beauty and value system they will always put you at the bottom you know who don't necessarily put you at the bottom you, the men of your nation Men of your nation love your skin tone and, and, and how your lips form and these things. But once again, you're the worst to your men and treat the slave masses the better. You have that mammy complex still going on. Isaiah 5 and 15 says, The mean man shall be brought down and the mighty man shall be humbled and the odds of the lofty shall be humbled. What happened to our people is we were humbled. All right. The Lord had to humiliate us in the ways he did that was by setting our enemies and adversaries up against us. Verse 13, therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. So once our honorable men were famished and dried up with thirst in the multitude, you know that involves slavery. That's that captivity that was foretold for us to go into. And there it is, and we were mocked for it, right? We were humbled for it. The fact that you, every nation is saying you ugly, <laughs> when you know you ain't the ugliest one, that's being humbled. The fact that we got to go to work for these these Edomites, bro, and they going home with, with better women, you know, humble, more submissive women, more money, and, and doing less for it, and they're less intelligent, that's a humility experience. This whole captivity has been a humility experience. And this point in time is more humility than feeling it, than physical. It's more mental because you got to live through something. You don't feel the physical pain all the time, but you got to live through the experience of what it's like for another man who doesn't have your moral co compass to be a ruling up over you, man. And you can't go nowhere. You are, we are still in captivity. Captivity should be looked at as a jail cell, nothing more than that. <clears throat> Isaiah 5 and uh, 16, but the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment and the power that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Then shall the lambs feed after their manner in the waste places of the fat ones shall strangers eat. All right. And it goes on to goes to say woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. So the people that devise in all these schemes and created all these lang this language to make us seem like we're some incurable race of thieves and an angry mob of uh, uh, seductive beasts. Well, they're going to get penalized, man. They're going to get paid back for that. These is lies covered up as the truth. Truth be told, we the children of the uh, heirs to the promise. We the children of the Lord. And the Lord's going to have a great uh, uh, judgment to be had upon those that took us down. He said he was raw from my people, right? But the judgment that came down from, from the nations was heavier than, you know, than he, than he wanted, you know, that he set it up for. It was heavier. You know how it goes. Let me find it real quick. I was raw from my people. All right. I believe that's Isaiah 34. Scripture says, Isaiah uh, 47 and 6, it says, I was wroth with my people. I have polluted my inheritance. That's the Lord dealing with his people, his, his inheritance, Israel. We're always going to be his inheritance. When won't we? If the Lord calls us in his inheritance when, while we're in captivity, and he's mad at us and while he polluted us and we still his inheritance. What, what makes you think we ain't always going to be? And giving them into thine hand, thou didst show them no mercy. Upon the ancient thou hast very heavily laid thy yoke. And you put yoke of iron upon our old or the ancient or the elderly people of our of our nation. 
our enemies, our adversaries, Esau, Edom, the nation that rules over our people that doesn't, uh, that, is, that was not a part of the Lord's heritage. You are the ones who showed no mercy upon us when the Lord put us in, our, in your hands. So therefore, it'll be a very great judgment that happens to you. Now, the judgment that's to come, Isaiah 24 and 1, Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. This is going to be a great, great destruction by way of World War III, coming nuclear war. We are excited about that, you know, but we know it's going to be a trying, trying time. There's going to be our temptation, tribulations, like none other you've seen on earth. But we have to endure through it. Verse 2, and it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with the mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the bar, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury. Which means all is going to get it. Notice how it had the master, the maid, the mistress, the buyer, seller, all in there. Why? Because they're all going to be a part of this great distress that comes upon the earth. This great physical pain and forms of plagues of famine and droughts and insurrections of people in forms of uh, a war pestilences man all right so you, you women are not left out of that equation just like you're going through the captivity the same as with your male counterparts the israelite men rather than the negro latino native american men who you hate who you turn your nose up who you're better than you're still in the captivity with us and it's, now you can see why you're lofty because you think you're now you got a seat at the at the table you got to see that certain businesses and you think you're on that type of level as a man but you're not you're only here to receive the judgment of pain or the judgment of uh blessing of restoration and salvation so the the, the but we understand that the meat shall inherit the earth so you can't be all proud and lofty and think you're going to get a piece of that the land shall utterly be emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord hath spoken this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away, and the world languisheth and fadeth away. And the hardy people of the earth do languish. Why? Because the Lord is not with the hardy, uh, uh, hardy spirit. Um, pride come up before a fall, and the hardy spirit, you know, pride come up before destruction, and the hardy spirit before a fall, man. So the Lord is not with that hardiness to the daughters of Zion that are getting right and trying to change and continue on with that continue on for the brothers out here don't be simple enough to think that every woman with a big button and smile is is, is your eve it belongs to you hey man you you get you can claim it for the kingdom man but move on you got a job to do and these are serious times ahead don't don't be swindled by what you see all right with your eyes can be very deceptive because things out here are temporary things that you see are temporary so that's a deception it's only to last for a period of time but the things not seen are eternal what's that the kingdom of heaven and all the glory that comes with it being the child of israel right in the kingdom that's set up eternal eternally for us to rule in i brought this out as videos that are fine till next time shalom